Okay. Okay, so I'll just sit back and kind of relax. <laughs> Clyde, Clyde, who? Clyde, Clyde, who? Clint Robin. Clint Robin. Clint Robin. That's right. Okay, and y'all live. Good evening and welcome to Inside the Mental Health. I'm Bob the Avenue, your host. That's me, Bob. Y'all see me all the time. I'm the goofy guy that's on here. Right next to me is uh, the angelic, uh, beautiful, inside <laughs> and out, very classy dame, uh, called Emily, <laughs> Emily Welch. And right next to uh, Emily is uh, Clint Robert, our musician tonight, who Clint has had, has some C has a CD out, and Clint is well known in the area, and Clint will be playing some of his uh, music tonight. Kind of country Cajun, I guess. Yes, um, I like to label it Basin Country, because it's got a Southern Louisiana flavor to it. It's country, but it has a South Louisiana flavor. Yeah. So I call it Basin Country. Okay. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be interested. We'll be looking forward to it, Clint. Uh Anyway, uh, before we start the show, we always go with prayer, and I would like to pray for Pete Delcom, Patsy Bertrand, Liz Bertrand, Toby Bertrand, my brother Albert B. Avenue, uh, 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 Jerry and uh, Carol the Planters, uh, Denver Nobles and Rosalind, uh, uh, NAMI people. And also, Emily's a facilitator for NAMI, and we're glad to have her, her expertise. And, 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 uh, and also, for Rich's mom, you know, uh, that his mom will be all right. She, she's up there in age, and, you know, she's heard. And also, we would like to pray for the other half of our show, Richard, uh, the, our associate producer, uh, and, and, and Brandon, our director, and Nellie, our, our other lovely, beautiful co-host, we asked for prayers for them. They couldn't make it uh, this time. But we, we, me and Emily will do the best we can yeah. to do our show. I think we'll be all right. Yeah. High five. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, 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 of course, to start the show, first of all, like, like I've been talking to Emily and Nellie, you know, like... Uh, like like me myself, I'm by myself ninety percent of the time, and I know a lot of people out there live by themselves, especially with mental conditions. You know, uh, you know, uh, and, and I can feel for you. And, and and of course tonight we're talking about love, and and of course love has never really been very kind to me. You know, like uh, I've been alone mostly all my life uh, in the romantic department it's been actually zilch really zilch and nobody has ever been really interested in me and of course i deal with one of the worst of all the mental illnesses paranoid schizophrenia frantic and 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 you would think that uh that's a lot on your plate to deal with but since uh, uh mike fusually led me to jesus christ i've grown and grown and grown and i think i'm i'm coming in to the next level of growth i feel the anointing all over me and and and, and for a guy that nobody really thought much of you know who smoked four packs of cigarettes a day uh washing dishes to just survive uh, I'm doing quite well. I'm doing yeah. great, actually. Thank For a guy you. that nobody ever right. gave any thought to, I was a doormat to people. And women, <laughs> well, that's a story in itself. <laughs> I, th I think with a little intervention, you, you went ahead and went a long way. you write written your own books and stuff. And, and I just wrote the other day, I wrote a couple words down to the point where I got to wanting to write parentheses around what something somebody would say or something I would say. And it just opens up. Because I was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia for several years of my yeah, life. Yeah, I know, I know. And it, it changed into post-traumatic stress. It changed into bipolar. It changed back to schizophrenia. Then it changed into bipolar. Yeah. And uh, writing down those thoughts and knowing also that we do fabricate things in our own head. Oh, and, yeah, you know, of give course. Give ourselves a chance to... to to heal from that too, because there's a lot of fearful things that happen in life. Yeah. A lot of abuses happen um, to anybody, even if you think you never had abuse. Maybe just, just being you caused abuse you yeah. know, to yourself, and yeah. and uh, you need time from, to heal from that. And you did a lot to to heal from that. You quit addictive drugs uh, like caffeine and 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 cigarettes, 
and you wrote and you wrote and you wrote and you wrote and you believed in God and you you did what you could for yourself health wise and you just uh, you're doing uh, great, Bob. Uh, I'm glad to have you as a friend. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Like, like like getting back to people to the people that are we'll, the, the main topic we'll be talking about is love and then though we have all been hurt and disappointed in love we have all been heartbroken we have all been disappointed by people some of us have been abandoned a lot of us have been abused you know a lot there's a lot of things that are, we as human beings have to deal with in this world you know and and, and I would like to say that uh, uh, if you're all alone out there and have nobody to talk to, you can always call me. Uh, we don't have my number up, but my number is 258-9425. And if anybody would like to get in contact with me and don't remember my number, uh, you can call AOC, that you, you can remember the television station, and leave a note for me, and they give me all the notes that I get, and I I'll, I'll, I'll will call, you know, I will call you, you can book on that. Uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, you know, like I said earlier, love has been the most important force. It is the most important force, driving force in the world today. It's the most powerful, love and prayer, you know. Yeah. And, 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 and it hasn't come near me too much, and that's what I live for. <laughs> but I, got, I, I, I have a lot of friends now yeah. when I never did before. So, you know, it, it, God is working in my favor. And, 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 and uh, you know, life is a joy. You Put know, this way, me. Bob. You're too cool for, for one broad to tie you down. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, yeah. thank you. Well, thank you, you know, hey, God is love. Yeah. God is you love, know, yes. That's one of the main things he... Jesus expressed, what's the love your neighbor, love your enemy. Love your, yeah, love, love your, your enemy, enemy. love your love neighbor as yourself. It's one of the main things that he expressed in, you know, in his, the time he was here on earth. Yeah, of course, of course. That's why he came to earth. To, you know, like, like ladies and gentlemen, we, 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 we do some brilliant, wonderful things as human beings, and we do also some of the most dumb and stupid things that, 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 that people have ever done. And, and, and we're fall, you know, Jesus came into the world to help us. And, and, right. and I will attest that with my mental illness, if I didn't have my spiritual life and my faith, I would probably be living in a halfway house right now, you know. Well, I want I want to mention that I think I think you just said, uh, Clint, that um, you love your enemies. Well, I think a lot of people they make the mistake of treating their friends like enemies, and that's where love goes wrong. And sometimes people get abused, and I don't I don't think that's a fair world. And if you're out there with those problems. Um, Find your own. Find your own like Bob did. Find your own like like I do. You yeah. know, find your own yeah. like in music, in art, in reading, and writing. Yeah, there's, there's all, I mean, with the internet and everything, it, it, you can learn anything. Right. You know, I mean, there's just worlds out there to explore. And, and I will attest that, you know, the Lord led me through all, first of all, I'll say a little thing. That, that uh, you know, sometimes when, when things aren't going wrong, we might think, be mad at God. I think God, the universe of God isn't working for us. But like the other day, uh, last, before the season, before we started this season, I didn't know that we had to sign up for the new season. And if I would miss the sign up time, we wouldn't even have right. the show in the air. And, and somebody I heard overheard somebody because because AOC didn't have my new address. So I didn't get the, the memo. And, and I overheard somebody or something. My light went on and, and I, I knew I had to sign up. And I signed up for the new season. And, and, and I knew that was divine appointment that I was able to do that. Because I think, I think uh, the person, oh, yeah. the master, wants, likes our show on the air. Because I think we do good things. Right. And then today, I'm watching TV. And I'm watching uh, Off the Wall with Jacob and uh, Paul. And, 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 and Jacob has a great show, too. And, uh, you know, and they're talking about the new season. Yeah. And that let me know 
wow, the new season is coming up and I didn't get any information. So I called AOC, I talked to Deborah, lovely uh, Deborah who works for AOC, Ed Secretary, and, and uh, I found out that. Right. And, you know, and I, I, and I thank God. You know, if you're out there and you don't believe there's a God, ask him to show you. And, and he's a marvelous entity, generous, loving. And, I, I you know, this isn't a, a religious show because I have much disdain for religion because it has too much man-made control about it. Right. But when you jump into Agreed. the spirituality of right. it all... Oh yeah, no. It's it it, right. it spirituality is important. I mean, it feels it's good to feel loved from a powerful entity. To feel that you're accepted by somebody greater and more profound than you. It's it to be a part of any time in a relationship to feel that that person's just a little bit better than you, and and even though they think that you're better than them or he's better, however it works, it feels good to be loved by. Um, it feels good to feel loved, by, it, you know? to, to belong, belong. Yeah, and to and to have those those special things happen. I mean, I have all kinds of special things. I believe I have good karma. I mean, you have great karma. Yeah, you have a great karma. But you gotta you gotta give love to to receive yeah, yeah, love, well, just like you, John Lennon says. You're not pretentious, you know. You you you're a humble girl, and you'll talk to anybody, you right. know. I mean, that's that's a great quality, mm -hmm. you know. I'm a little shy. I'm not as outgoing as you are, but I think I'm with schizophrenia. Uh, you know that that's one of the traits. But I'm learning as I go along, and uh, you know. But you do a great job, I and do you do a great job on the show too. Yeah. Yeah. And you're also easy on the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to read some of the uh, some of my books because uh, evidently the book I wrote, From Light to Glory to Darkness, everybody likes it, you know. So uh, I guess I did something right. And I'm going to read a few excerpts from it. And, and I'm going to read a few more things. Because what I've learned that that... If you don't have anybody to vent to and talk to, I, well, I don't have that, I talk to God, but I also write. And when you write down your thoughts or how you feel about this, and then the, everybody has a story, it'll make you feel so good inside, right. you know? And, and, and that's what I'm learning, and that's what I realize that what I am, that's what I become from a dishwasher to an author and a writer, you know? So anyway, now I know I'm a writer, and people say I'm good. So I guess it's an I'm interesting good. guy right here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. He is. Okay, let me write this. This is this is when I was a young kid, and I was spending time with the Demai family. I spent a lot of time with those guys as well with another friend named Timmy. It was me, but Douglas, Bernard, Edward, and Paul. We would spend a lot of time at the Demai's house. And sometimes we would eat dinner over there, which was a trip in itself. Dinner was a riot, and there were about 15 people sitting at a huge table, all reaching for the food with about 30 hands, fighting other hands to get the food. So here we were, children, teenagers, and adults, all chowing down at the same time. It was a big hurrah, with food falling on the floor and drinks spilling and kids fussing. Miss Ann, the mother, when... When something fell or a drink was spilled, would calmly say, pick up your glass and quit fussing, in such a calm voice, like it was no big deal, that it would diffuse the situation and everyone would listen to her. I guess she had had to deal with so many kids every day that she took it in stride and could handle it without stressing out. She was an amazing woman. In fact, most of the women in those days were absolutely fantastic people. They were completely loyal to their children and their husbands. And of course, there weren't nearly as many divorces as there are today. My pastor, Richard Liday, told me that the statistics for unwed couples in the USA compared to married couples was 58% unmarried and 42% married. As Bob Dylan sang in the 60s, the times they are changing. Boy, I'm sure when he sang that song, he, he didn't realize how much the world would really change and keep on changing as it is today. 
Speaking of the mothers of that day, my mother did a fantastic job in raising five boys and two girls. We always had healthy meals and clean clothes every day. We all had the top of the line bicycles, my last bike being a red twin that I was crazy about and rode everywhere. She dressed us in the latest line of summer and winter clothes. My dad may have been rough and strict with us, but you couldn't have asked for a better provider as we had everything we wanted. I had a good childhood as a boy. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, like like since we're talking about Reed, and we're going to get to uh, to, to Clint in a little while to sing. This is, I took a, a riding class with uh, Miss uh, Linda Robert, and this is what she, I gave her my book, and, and this is what she said about it. I'm going to read it. Uh, Excellent character. The first start of the book, I had Weena Weena talking about the movie The Time Machine. Okay, this is what she wrote. Extra, excellent character named Weena Mina. Uh, interesting theme, time travel. Outstanding, outstanding way to include other cities, European cities, travel. You write of great wonders, Great Wall of China, Egypt with its colossal pyramids. Wow, glad to know you've done... Uh, research to include such intriguing and exquisite places and landmarks in the world. I can tell you that you are an avid reader. Love how you interject the artworks, masterpiece, Da Vinci's and Mona Lisa to the crown jewels. Very clever to include many brilliant, prominent, and world men in your work of, of art. It makes for a very interesting novel. One of the time travels one of time travels love love the way you use local color in your story ray boys jefferson street outstanding uses of historical characters for the time travels throughout your novel can tell you have much knowledge and you certainly did your research you have great artistic skills your work is so complex and creative yet so brilliant that's cool mm. Excellent way to include family history and your life experiences and your father's distinguished position as a pharmacist. Really enjoyed your work of art. Thank you for sharing. That's what she said. Isn't that cool? Yeah. That made me feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll have you in a second. Book. That's about his third book. Third book. Yeah. Okay. First, next I'm going to read. Uh, we got time. Okay. Next I'm going to read... Uh, this is my interview with Nellie Harrington. Uh, uh, because of the changes in my diet and lifestyle, thanks to Nellie's approach to a balanced body, Nellie is the girl that's on the show with school. I feel like I'm a 35-year-old man, even though I'm 65. Most men at my age have slowed down considerably, yet I am bench pressing 205 pounds, squatting with 254 pounds, and deadlifting 336 pounds, weighing uh, in, the, in the mid 170s. I think that's pretty good figures for a man of 66. The good news for me uh, is as the toxins continue go, continually go out my body, the stronger I'm going to get. That's how Nellie's gift and knowledge has influ influenced me. Since I've gotten, okay, uh, since I've gotten some of those toxins out of my body, I am able to think more clearly, which has enabled me to get a better grip on my prayer life, my relationship with Jesus, and an increase in faith in my spirituality. My schizophrenia is more under control with my lifestyle changes. And if you read, if you write, that will help too. Of course, since I've been delivered from smoking four packs of cigarettes a day, and as I don't drink alcohol at all, it further enhances my life lifestyle. And I say thanks to Jesus for coming into my life. And also a very heartfelt thanks to you, Nellie, for helping me. Uh, okay. Uh, with Nellie, I ask her every day to read my body. And she is usually right on when she answers me. Nellie has a special... Uh, infrared wavelength, wave, full body length mat, uh, which is made of an assortment of amethyst crystals and materials which work to balance for the body, including the muscle, skin, and bones, and puts one in a relaxed state when lying on the infrared therapeutic mat. 
In fact, sleeping on the mat for three or four hours is like sleeping eight to ten hours on a conventional bed. Okay, and, and that's what Nelly uses for a healing practice. Anyway, uh, now we're going to get you one more right after this, Clint. Oh, hey, I'm You ready? Okay, okay. This is my third book I'm writing. I put my second book up for a while, and I'm, I'm, I've been working hard on my third book. It's about time travel. Uh, and, and this is what I'm writing. This is the second page that I've written. I had grown up in Layville, which is really Lafayette, with my mom and dad having three children and my older brother David and me and my younger sister Maggie. My dad had been a physicist, a physics professor at the local university, the University of Martin, or UM as it was called. My dad was an easygoing man and a good man, but he was so busy with his work that I didn't spend much quality time with him, leaving me with no nurturing except from my mom. However, in those days, the 50s and the 60s, the norm or more of raising a family back then was that the fathers worked and provide the home and shelter and food provisions and material goods while the moms did the nurturing and the raising of the children. That was how the society worked in the 50s and 60s, and that's how I grew up. However, I was soon learned about how special and extraordinary my dad was and how in awe of him I would become. Like I said, I never had much contact with my dad while growing up as he was always busy with his work. Therefore, because of the non-bond I had with my dad, I grew up very insecure and very meek and shy, unlike my brother and sister, who seemed to have no problem in dealing with the outside world. My older brother David had joined the Marines and was stationed overseas. My sister Maggie was still a freshman at a convent school in Leeville. Both my brother and sister seemed to be doing well with their lives. They both had a lot of friends, and I could tell even from afar that my dad was very proud of him. My dad himself was an overachiever, being a physics professor where he earned his doctorate at LSU, the biggest state university in Louisiana at the time. He had graduated in 1940 from LSU with a full doctorate in physics and married my mom, Henrietta, the next year as he had dated her all through graduate school. They were very much in love and my dad soon became part of the faculty at LSU teaching the freshman and sophomore classes rudimentary physics or like they say the beginners physics classes. This is my book that I am so excited about and when I write a page or two I'm, I'm just you know and this is y'all can use this as an example because this is probably how you people out there if y'all all alone by yourselves and Denver Nobles always talks about that yeah. Denver one of the facilitators like Emily for Nami and with his with, with his wonderful wife Rosalind uh you know talk about right your feelings down, write what's going on. And when me personally, when I write, I feel so good, you know. Last night I wrote two pages and I just went, and when it's time to go to bed, I just laid down and I felt such peace, yeah. like I was, I was complete, you know. Right. Well, what I like is, I like thinking that I can write a book like you. I like thinking that I, if I use format and I use structure to how I write, it could turn into a beautiful book like you wrote. And that's what helps because if I'm just going to write, I'm just going to write gibberish. I'm just going to write maybe a poem or something that, okay, maybe it's a good poem, maybe it's really not a good poem. But if you get structure into what you're writing and go for that goal of writing you know 15 pages a short story or maybe yeah. that's going to turn chapter by chapter it's going to turn into a book you know yeah. like it's just so it's so rewarding to write and it's so like it what, what's you your favorite so word good. to describe how you when you write it makes you feel complete yeah complete yeah yeah yeah. You know, like, like you know, I never thought I'd be a writer, you mm -hmm. know. Back then when I was, uh, when I was washing dishes, smoking four packs of cigarettes a day, I just wanted a girlfriend, which has never happened, but that's all right. <laughs> I wanted to be accepted, you know, yeah. and, and that never happened. But now I have found my niche in life, and that's what we got to call. Mm -hmm. Where? I hear it. It's not, it's, it's bigger. Uh, Jacob got to send it. 
Okay, so anyway, what I'm trying to say is I'm a writer. And that's what the Lord or whatever my destiny is, you know. Mm -hmm. And Emily, you are hot. You are more intelligent than you know, you know. Yeah. You're hot. You're PhD material, you know. Thanks, Father. And, 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 and I would love to read some of your writing. Yeah. You have, you have such, such insight into the human condition, you yeah. know. You have a lot to offer. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate that. But uh, yeah. we're going to have uh, Clint sing right yeah. now. You ready, Clint? Ready as I'll ever be. You know, it's kind of interesting you picked the, the love topic tonight uh, to, um, for your program. Uh, this song here is called Cajun Love Affair. Okay. The first two songs I wrote were about Cajuns looking out. Okay. And about the history. Now, this song is a reverse of someone coming to Cajun land and falling in love with the Cajun culture. It's called Cajun Love Affair. Come on. Okay. okay. Basin land, see my Cajun friends down in Louisiana. Pass a good time once again. This Cajun music there, dancing everywhere. People really care. It's a Cajun love affair. Gumbo crawfish mock shoe With a touch of Cajun roux Smell just filled the air Being cooked by Cousin Claire When you go to Louisiana You know you best beware There's a feeling in the air It's Cajun love affair Good time Cajun band Good music, food and friends You have to make your plans and when you do your best beware While the V is in the air The people really care It's Cajun love affair I must go there again It's a peaceful Cajun hand To make the people know so grand On my way again See my Cajun friend Place on Louisiana In a place called Louisiana There's Cajun music there Dancing everywhere People really care It's Cajun love affair When you go to Louisiana You know you best be That's awesome, Glenn. That's a, that's Thank a, you. It's like a, uh, a very simple song that means very deep, but that has a very deep meaning. That's awesome. I love it. It's got a good uppity yeah. beat to it. Yeah. Would you like to sing another song? Sure. Clint Roger, ladies and gentlemen. What's your wife's name, Clint? Uh, Joan. Joan. Clint and Joan Roger. And, and they're going to both be on the show one day. His, as his wife, he says, is a great singer, you know. Okay. Uh, this one right here is called The Basin Boogeyman. It's another 
upbeat song. Song's about a guy who works real, real hard. It's not about a monster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's about a guy who works real hard, and he talks about the culture of Louisiana and stuff. So it's called the Basin Boogeyman. <laughs> I'm a basin boogeyman I make my way the best I can This is where I go again There's cypress trees and big pots and Honey bees and bitchy hen We Cajun love of our basin land The giant is a beautiful state, like you're saying about basing land with the basin and everything. And and, 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 and like we're talking about love and peace and all that. You know, if, if ladies and gentlemen, if y'all have a, a hard work schedule or you're always busy or something, try out going to a lake or something. We got right. beautiful waterways and everything and, and or you know maybe go camping or with your family or something you yeah, got to do that mm -hmm. but you know this is a great this is a great area the people are wonderful in louisiana you know this is a great this is god's country to live in and, and this is a beautiful state try going out you know like like it's almost like the song robert frost road but this wasn't a week, but he wore on walking in the woods on a snowy evening. You know, just go out into nature and just look at all the great things out there, you know, that, that our Creator has made, you know. It, it's a wonderful world to live in. Oh, yeah. That might give you peace, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, like, like, like we say, the main focus, we're talking about is love and, oh. and, and relationships and everything like that. So, Clint, as a... As a boat captain, did you ever wed anybody? Did you ever did you ever do weddings or anything? Uh, no. No, no you didn't. I never <laughs> had that, uh, that opportunity, <laughs> no. Uh, no. I guess I could have though. Yeah, you could have. But yeah. uh, no, I never did. Was it? Did you ever take your uh, instruments with you offshore? Or? Oh yeah, always. I bet that was oh, a yeah. great gift that you and, gave uh, everybody, huh? Music. When uh, I work with with a. One of the bigger dredging companies, we had more than one captain. We had two captains, so uh -huh. we would work six hours on, six hours off. So had a lot of time to kind of just Not a lot of time to sleep, relax though. and Take naps. we'd go there sometimes. We the shift was like fourteen and seven. Right. Mm -hmm. And there were times when one of the captains couldn't come. I stayed out there like over a month, you know, oh, yeah, and yeah. something. 
Yeah, I worked on the dredge board already. And uh, it gets stressful that. because you have all these people in there. And majority of the time, they don't want to be there. They want to make a check, but they don't want to be there. So mm. you got to deal with all these issues with yeah. these people. And uh, and you're so, the boss. you got to tell them what to do. Right. you got to keep everybody under control, try to keep everybody happy and everything. Right. And I've been offshore. I mean, the guys the guys offshore are miserable. I mean, a lot of them go out there to get away from their wives. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know... Uh, you know, uh, you know they're not ha a happy crew out there. You know, except for Generally the food. Not. You know, right. it's lonely out there. You know, well, some of them are away from their families too. You know, but uh, you know. I just wrote a card for Andrew, and he left tonight. And I wrote a card for him, and I stuck it in one of his suitcases. So hopefully, he finds it when he's lonely. Well, that's nice. <laughs> Isn't that that's nice? nice. Yeah. A friendship card reminding him that he's my best friend. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I but, um, I mean, I, I don't think stress, like, that um, type of stress, like, working offshore and stuff or, or working away from home is healthy for somebody with a mental health disability. No, um, no. I, or I somebody that. that doesn't have good boundaries or, you know, coping skills or anything like that. It's, yeah. it's difficult. It'll yeah. break anybody, really, and especially break somebody that's prone to it. Yeah. When I worked offshore with the schizophrenia, I had gone to cooking school and learned how to cook. But I wasn't well enough to become a cook. Mm -hmm. I was just a galley hand, you know, with the schizophrenia. And and you know, uh, you know, you, you you've got to be able to get along with people, you know. Yeah. And, and I bet now with you more of your coping skills, though, you'd fare better if you were to try to go out there. Oh yeah, I do. I do, I do a lot. Age, I do a lot. You better. would do a lot better. Yeah, I do a lot better. You have. Much better coping skills, I think you've probably learned over the past few years from what from what you speak of yeah. that you've been through. Yeah, but uh, you know, uh, uh, it's all about love, you know. Mm -hmm. like, like, it's like uh, like Nellie Harrington got me to say these words. Like like, and, and people might be interested in this. Like when something comes along that that puzzles you. Or, or upsets you or bothers you, Nelly said to say these words, uh, I love you, I'm sorry, forgive me, thank you. And she said those, of course, of course I believe in Jesus Christ, you know, and, and, and she said these words go out to the universe and good things come back to you, right. you know, positive things, you know. Right, and, and I think positive words really helped too like what we were going to talk about tonight is those positive words like writing out happiness writing joy writing smile writing love writing and getting all those positive words it kind of takes you away from thinking about the negative words like if but be um why like that, why or, yeah or um anything that has a negative yeah yeah thing to it you know yeah. i read something somewhere the other day and i wrote it down if something comes like that i'll write it down it's, encouragement is a positive motivator encouragement is, is a, a positive, positive motivator yeah and, and 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 what 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 we all we should do like this is kind of like nelly that that me and oh, yeah, emily doing great encourager. and She's yeah an encourage encourager. each other you know yeah you know don't don't put don't tear each other i mean we're all human, and we all have uh, shortcomings, and we all get aggravated with friends and everything. But the, the trick is try not to let that get to you and try to lift everybody up, you know, lift right. up your friends and love your friends and everything. The, you know, there's not really much of that as much in the world as it should be, you know. Mm -hmm. If it was, it would be a better world. Right. But, you know, that, that's just... Uh, right. hints, you know, mm -hmm. uh, clues. Well, I think, I think a, a lot of times love can even get in the way. I mean, I think I, as a young girl, I, there had been times where I thought I was in love, um, with guys I spent maybe three years with or four years with, and it turned out that I was just, I thought I knew what love was, you know, and. And you got to really, I would have been, I would have been miserable being with him. I really would have. And I didn't know that at the time until I found out what real love is, you know? Yeah. And sometimes, oftentimes we marry those people that, that we don't know that we wouldn't be happy with or we overlook 
we overlook the fact that we'll be unhappy with them just to marry or just to get just to get, to get on out the house or right something. to get on with life or to get out of the house and and sometimes when you do that homework or you get a second chance is when you do it right you know yeah like me from it's, i've been in love four times in my life mm -hmm. i've always of course you yeah. know uh you know uh I'm still here, and I'm still. I've been. I've, I've been heartbroken, like we all have. People yeah. out there, if you're out there, and and you have been heartbroken, you've been loved. You know, uh, that's a deep feeling to truly love somebody and to have them break your heart. You know, there's, that's a hard thing to take. Yeah, there's. I mean, not not finding the right love or being married to the wrong person i mean everybody does it and i think yeah. it, it happens a lot and and um even psychiatrists they go through the same thing they, they yeah. marry the wrong person that they fight with all the time or mm -hmm. they're not happy um it happens to all kinds of different people you know we get it we get attached to that that first relationship and go with it and and you know it's okay to get have to get back on your feet or or mend that relationship find out what you can get happiness out of it and and treat your partner to happiness and treat yourself to happiness yeah and treat each other together to yeah. to to grow you know yeah yeah like like and, and, and like it's, if a, it's difficult to do probably it's just relationships are difficult yeah relationships you gotta work difficult. at it yeah you know yeah it's true and, and, and I think if you have spirituality in the mix it'll go a lot smoother but uh yeah, like, uh, before we go on, I would like to say hello to somebody I really love a lot, Miss Jackie Ballou. Oh, you know Miss Jackie yeah. Ballou. Miss Jackie Ballou, hi, love you. And uh, Miss Jackie Ballou is like my guardian angel. She's always there to help me, you know. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate Miss Jackie. Happy Mother's Day, Miss Jackie. I'm sorry I couldn't talk to you the other day when I brought you your flowers. We were busy. But uh, I'll talk to you tonight. Uh, I thought about that later on, and I was sorry about that. But, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, after all the adversities, ladies and gentlemen, that are you out there, and if you're suffering, remember, you're still here, you know? Yeah. You're still here, and you still got life, and, 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 and the life life is a joy whether you by yourself or with a loved one or whatever just uh you know uh if you by yourself try to do things that will make you feel good there's like oh i'm sorry oh, no, go ahead go ahead i said i was gonna say there's not much i believe in but i believe in ultimate possibilities that there's unlimited amount of possibilities here on this earth that's right and among all the other earths in this universe and outside of this universe that there's endless possibilities so when you're thinking that'll never happen i'll never find love or i'll never i'll never get rid of this stinking wart on my finger i'll never i'll never do anything right I'll, there's Unlimited possibilities here never say <laughs> on never. this planet. Never, never say, say never. never. Well, yeah. you know, I played music in bars for years and years and years and years and met a lot of people, met women. Uh -huh. But little did I know, I would meet my wife in a coffee shop. Wow. Oh, yeah. Was it Love at First Sight? Bridge, in, in Joie de Vie. Uh, it's not Joie de Vie, it was... Um, uh, Forget the little name of the coffee shop. It was the same area, same place, but uh, and uh, that's where I met her. And we've been together. We've been knowing each other since 2007. It's gonna be five years. That's, that's awesome, Clint. That's awesome. How was it when you met? Oh, I was I was in like I was excited about some stuff because I had just written my first uh, Cajun song and recorded it and. I was all excited about that, and I drove up to the coffee shop to go have some coffee and stuff. I was going around uh, promoting my, my music, you know, and I right. walked in there, and she was at the counter ordering some coffee. Oh, nice. And I just, when I saw her, it's like a light went off in my head. Wow. Awesome. She said, can it's I buy you a happens. cup of coffee? There's yeah, so yeah. many possibilities. To say that I'm with my one and only... Maybe it might not be true, but he's definitely my soulmate, and I just definitely love at first sight. And and you know when when you get that, and you just know it. It's an you instinct. Just know you know it. Just, I guess. I mean, you might fall in love at first sight with the wrong person, but really, it it's it's divine intervention. Well, it really is. It is divine. And 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 when 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 you say you've got your soulmate, 
That's when the connection is. When you know it's your soulmate, yeah. that's the connection, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. I've never had a soulmate, you know. But, uh, you know, I, I've had a, a, a close friend with Miss Jackie's uh, son, uh, Jamie Blue. We were best of friends, but he was a male. We were friends, but I never had a female soulmate yeah. that I would love to have, you know. But mm -hmm. you never know. You never yeah. know. And, yeah. and, and I would like to say I am still here. I am strong. Right, I am in good health. Right, right. I got a good mind, right. even though a lot of people from my hometown think I'm a psycho. You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's all right. You so know? what? Okay, well, so they hear, they they hear they schizophrenia. They hear the, the goat word, the goat word, schizophrenia, and they think psycho. Well, good for them. They don't know what, what disapproval and denial and... and 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 denial only comes from the people that are abusive and abusive and all those things that we have to go through to feel the way we do about ourselves or to have the things go off in our heads the way they go off and for us to be diagnosed with schizophrenia. It doesn't mean that we're going to grab a knife and kill somebody who no, we were no, no, born no. with schizophrenia or receive schizophrenia during life. It doesn't mean that at all. And I don't know how the movies made it that way, but they sure did. Mm, it's like smoke pot and get schizophrenia or whatever it is that they they created in the media world. They created yeah. it for the movies or something, yeah. you know, because it's not that way. We're no. we're all of it's the human condition. Yeah, according to statistics, <laughs> it really is. According to statistics, uh, men, mentally ill people are usually less prone to violence right. than not than the regular social well, I think, normal people. I think people. that there's 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 mental health. There, there's normals. Normalcy, there's mental health, there's learning disabilities, and then there's psychopaths. Of course there's psychopaths. The, yeah. But it has nothing to do with the other three, the normal and the, the mental health and the learning disabilities. Psychopaths are psychopaths. Whatever. Yeah. And, They're and, not and, those, right? That's You're not right. A and, and, I'm not a and also people with mental illnesses or it's a fact, card the statistics have higher IQs than the average person. Mm -hmm. You know, we're smart people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. in, in relativity to what you said earlier about more uh, that, uh, I, I heard something the other day. It says, just when you think nothing's going right in your life, get ready. God's about to do something that's right. fantastic in your life. That's right. When you least expect it. That's right. That's and right. That's when that's when He does it. That's know? right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, all I can say is. Uh, I've been through. We've all been through stuff. We all have a story, and 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 uh, if you would just try to do something new, wouldn't you say, Emily? Yeah. Try, you know, walk, walk, and see the beauty of of the world, man. It's a beautiful world, mm -hmm. and and if you have the internet, there's so many things you can learn and everything, you know. Yeah, I wouldn't. But the only thing about the internet is I wouldn't look for love on the internet because that's a slippery slope. <laughs> yeah, I, know, I, know, I, know. I mean, maybe a mature person could go on the internet and search for another mature person. That's different. Yeah. But um, I'm talking like all those. They, there's so many weird things on the internet. I know. So but there's so many things good things. Probably, yeah. I don't know. I don't search the internet. Well, well, stuff, put it this way. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't, I don't go on. I don't, I, I don't have any pornography on my on my website, so I don't get any of it coming in right. from the, from the crazies out there. You yeah. know, I have a clean website, and 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 I don't have much trouble. With my internet, I don't know how to do Facebook. I guess if I did, I might have a little trouble dealing with people out there. Right. I don't know. Well, I guess if I was single, girl, and it would be so easy to be like, "Ooh, he looks nice," or "Ooh, he looks nice," and then be desperate. But you know, it's it's good to it's good to. to God's got something in store for you. You know, you met his girl at a coffee shop. I'm sure. Yeah, you know. When, when what I do, uh, and I, I watch myself because when I do Facebook and stuff, because sometimes they'll start some of these political things or yeah. they start talking down God, and I have to stop myself because I'm gonna get into the, you know, I'm gonna, you gonna say get my calls, and so I, I I regulate myself to that, and I try to stay away from those type of uh, posts because. I'm gonna get started with it, and it's gonna just 
because I know some of this stuff that they say is it's not true. Do you yeah. have any other blessings in life that God's given you other than your girlfriend in a coffee oh, shop? We just I mean, bought your a brand new house. You just bought a brand new wow, house. Wow, Glenn, awesome. new house. We made our first payment yesterday. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, awesome. And um, I just love, I love to do music. We do music, at, my wife and I, too, with uh, Don Johnston on a Emmanuel Church. It used to be a Emmanuel Baptist, Baptist. Church. Yeah. yeah. We do every Sunday evening at 5 o'clock. We do uh, service there with a good friend of ours uh, and awesome, talented guy, Jody Beer. And we do the music and stuff, and it's, it's, just, it's just a blessing to yeah. do that. It doesn't matter if I live in Henderson and i got to drive all the way to Lafayette. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's such a pleasure and a blessing to do that. Yeah. That's, that, that's your you, life, you do know. Do you have any first-hand experience with mental illness or anything like that that you can share no, with us? No. Um, I mean, I've going through divorce and I've, I've been depressed, depressed and stuff right? like that going yeah. through divorce and stuff uh, but uh, I, you know I try to I try to always keep a positive attitude I try to like with my music I try to you know I try to write positive stuff that keeps me that a positive would, note. You, would you like to sing another song this is a song I wrote uh, it's called bass and country it's, it's related to what I said earlier about the music. Yeah. A uh, bass and country. Uh, I like to do a lot of songs to promote my culture. Yeah, I don't, this is great and, culture. And uh, I grew up in the basin. I lived in Henderson. Okay. And you talked about looking at beautiful things. I wrote a song, I'm not gonna sing it tonight, but it's called The Cypress Waltz. It's about me and my dad as a young boy going fishing in the basin. And I would bring my guitar with me and then we tie up the cypress tree and fish, and I'd play my guitar and stuff, you know, me and my dad and stuff. Wow, and what a life. Beautiful old waltz. What a uh, life. And, uh, but it's in French. I'm not, I'm not gonna do that tonight, but I'm gonna do this one called Bass and Country. Okay. There's a place down Lucy and called Basin Country It flows with life and lots of fun and Cajun friends There's water fears everywhere we really care People smiling, people dancing and can't compare Once you get a taste of life in Basin Country Realize the way of life say um you're the first guy that's come on and sung about like the basin and the bio and the country and the the gator and stuff and i just think that's so cool like that is i cool. i really condemn you for Thank for you. being proud of your heritage you. and i grew and, up in it you know and yeah i mean look I, I was i left in 77 i left and went to the air force mm-hmm. and i came back in 83 
I left a while, you know, but I knew I always had to come back. And I grew up, in me growing up, we didn't have like we have now, computers and all this stuff. The simple things right. is what I grew up on. Like, mm. like I was saying about the song, the, the Cypress song, going out into the basin and fishing and just, just spending time in it's such humble. a peaceful environment. Yeah, it's yeah. humble. It's a humble way. It, 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 it's good yeah. for serenity and uh, yeah. peace, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm so glad y'all had me. Thank you very much. Thank you. You enjoyed yourself, Clint? Oh, I enjoyed it so much. Yeah, we're, we're going to have you and your wife on yeah, another time, and maybe y'all could both sing, or she could sing, and y'all could play some, some other sure. music. Uh, we would like to uh, thank you all for watching the show. Uh, Miss Jackie, I love you, Liz. Patsy, I love y'all. Uh, uh, Lee, you, sweetie. Lee, uh, <laughs> Lee Gary, hi, Lee. Miss Oleen Gary, I love you to death. Uh, Joan Seymour, love y'all. We hope y'all have enjoyed the show. I didn't have the material to talk to. I usually have it. We mm -hmm. just, we just ad lib uh, yeah. I guess you know we did, of course I hope I didn't talk too much <laughs> you did great. You did fantastic. You know, I'm just supposed to be the musician <laughs> we did fantastic uh, we, we would we would like to, if y'all out there and you by yourself and right. you don't know what to do